Set point theory. The idea that your body fat is set like a thermostat. There's a predetermined amount of fat you are meant to have, and if you try to alter this, your metabolism, hunger, and body's inner workings will try and bring you back. While this would explain why it's so hard to lose weight, and even harder to keep it off. Is it entirely accurate? What's up? Hey, a few years back, I lost 20 pounds of stubborn fat. Since then, I have kept the weight off. Lately, I have been killing it with my routine. I think I've been looking, you know, a little bit lean. I think the shoulders especially. Similar to everybody, 2020 completely derailed my routine. It took my routine, it turned it around, it put it upside down. And since then, I feel like my lifestyle, my diet, my training have continued evolving. And obviously, so has my body. But I think this makes it a good time to address the whole concept of set point theory, the idea that your body is meant to exist and forever maintain at a certain place. Because according to this theory, I A, should have never been able to lose the weight, B, keep the weight off, and C, I mean, if my body is going to continue changing, then it should be presumably changing to go back to the place that I started. So today we're going to talk about set point theory, what it is, where it came from, how it relates to our beliefs about body type, weight loss, weight maintenance, as well as the science behind it, and a newer, I think, Think more encouraging theory called the settling point theory that suggests your body fat may be less set and instead have more to do with the lifestyle and environment around you. Before we get into it, I want to say a huge thank you to Seed Daily Symbiotic for partnering with me on today's video. The Daily Symbiotic is a two-in-one prebiotic and probiotic. And on the note of balance, similar to your unique set or settling point, your bacterial balance is unique to you. Now, what's interesting is that it's constantly changing, right? Lifestyle factors like your diet, exercise, if you're taking certain medicines, sleep, stress, all of these can impact your bacterial balance. And while there's definitely a lot more room for research on this, what we do know is that people with obesity tend to have less diverse gut bacteria than lean individuals. And when comparing within groups of people with obesity, those with less diverse gut bacteria tended to gain more weight. I'll link a research review down below, but what you need to know is that a more diverse gut is a better functioning gut and a better better functioning gut has impacts beyond just bloating and digestion. It also helps your metabolism better do its job, which is obviously important if you hope to lose weight or maintain weight or regulate your weight in some other way. So ways that we can restore diversity to our gut include consuming more prebiotics, probiotics, making lifestyle changes. The reason I like seed is because it's a two in one. It's got prebiotics and probiotics in a single convenient serving. The outer capsule contains the prebiotics. Think of these as fuel for your good bacteria. And the inner capsule is where the probiotics are. These are more good bacteria to help restore diversity to your gut. Seed contains 24 scientifically and clinically studied strains for total body health. So again, it's going beyond just bloating and digestion. It's also going to help support your cardiovascular health, immune function, and the list goes on. So if you want to check out Seed for yourself, if you want to bring a little bit more balance to your life, I will put a link down below as well as a code to save 15% off your first month's supply. So set point theory was first popularized in the 1950s. And the idea was that fat might produce a signal that was by the brain, where the brain would then compare this signal to a predetermined set point for body fat, where any discrepancy between the set point and signal would trigger changes in energy intake or expenditure, such that body fat would return to the set point. For example, if your body fat was higher than the set point, this would signal your brain to compensate by decreasing hunger to decrease energy intake and or increase movement to increase energy expenditure. Creating a calorie deficit by burning more calories than you consume, allowing you to reduce body fat levels until they are in line with that set point that your brain likes. On the flip side, if you lose weight and your body fat is lower than the set point, this would signal your brain to compensate by increasing hunger and or decreasing movement, creating a calorie surplus and helping restore body fat to that set point. If you've watched some of my other videos on metabolism and dieting, where we talk about hunger hormones like leptin and how these change as you diet, leptin was actually a really important discovery in support of the set point theory, at least initially. Leptin is a hormone that was discovered in 1994 that is primarily produced by fat cells in your body, and it interacts with receptors in your brain that are directly related to energy intake, aka how much you eat. Leptin is sometimes referred to as the satiety or the fullness hormone. Basically, more fat cells in your body means we are producing more leptin, we feel more satisfied from our meals, and 
less hungry. Whereas less fat cells in your body means we are producing less leptin, means we are going to feel less satisfied and more hungry. So the set point theory seems legit. And while it's definitely a convenient theory, there are many things it cannot explain, namely the increasing prevalence of obesity. I mean, nobody is born obese, right? And so according to set point theory, there should be some sort of feedback control mechanism that kicks in before people are able to gain enough weight to become obese and like even if they did become obese they should have no issues losing the weight right that's obviously not true beyond that set point theory also can't explain why it has been observed that children who watch more tv are more obese people gain weight in college people gain weight after getting married people gain weight after moving from asia to western countries some studies suggest that these observations may be due to a change in set point but like then again, if a set point can change, then it's not really set. Furthering this, the role of leptin, the fullness or satiety hormone has come into question because research has shown that people with obesity have more body fat, they do produce more leptin, but there's a disconnect in the way that that leptin is working because it's not helping to regulate their eating behaviors in the way that it should, according to the set point theory. So what's going on here? Well, just a guess life, the world around us, socioeconomic and environmental factors perhaps? Enter the settling point theory, which suggests that your body fat will settle in a certain range depending on various environmental factors. One way to think of this is like a reservoir where the volume of fluid in the reservoir represents your body fat stores, the input is energy intake, output is energy expenditure. Long story short, set point theory assumes that energy in and energy out are perfectly and immediately regulated, whereas settling point theory acknowledges that we live in the real world, free living humans do not have perfectly regulated energy in and energy out. These will change, at times they will be out of balance, but over time they can settle, find balance at various levels. I'll link this down below, but I actually did a whole series on metabolism, on how dieting affects your metabolism, how your metabolism adapts, it down regulates when you've been at a calorie deficit for an extended period of time, and this metabolic adaptation can actually be rather simply, I think, explained by the reservoir analogy. So let's say that you consciously try to lose weight. In the short term, you're increasing output, decreasing input. Naturally, this is going to result in less volume in the reservoir. However, there are limits to this. When you diet for an extended period of time, your metabolism adapts in various ways, but one of the ways that it adapts is that it will subconsciously decrease your daily activity, right? So you could still be crushing your workout, be showing up super consistently with your routine, but it's those little things like fidgeting, like getting up to stand up and walk around, like taking the long route, like parking further from the store, right? Those little like lifestyle activities that you don't even think about, it subconsciously decreases. And so not doing anything to counteract this to maintain your new body fat reservoir level, input must decrease. So what affects that limit? Well, biological sex, hormone levels, genetics, there are many different things that can affect in what range it will be healthy for you to maintain your body fat. Beyond that, when our weight or body fat levels change, it's also not always intentional. So unintentional things that may cause you to change your energy in or energy out would be stress, hormone levels again, occupation, what food is available to you, if there's food available to you, how palatable or tasty that food is, and the list goes on. Part of why I don't love the set point theory is because I think it's overly simplistic. It suggests that weight or body fat regulation is a purely physiological process. And so it's like, if you gain weight, you're getting a message, like a little text from your brain saying like, hey, we need to eat less. And like, it just assumes you're gonna listen to that message. Um, No, that's not how it works in the real world. There's so many factors both inside and outside of your body that affect whether you're going to gain weight, lose weight, maintain weight, and within what range you're gonna maintain. When I lost that 20 pounds of stubborn fat, I feel like I went through a huge shift of perspective. And honestly, even these past couple of years since completely changing my fitness routine in 2020, I feel like I've continued changing and I've continued evolving in my perspective on all this. Honestly, the more I learn, the more I experience, the less I realize I know. But if there is one thing that I do know, it's that there is power in routine what you do consistently, being aware of your habits and how your surroundings affect this. I hate, I know it's a strong word, but I hate the saying in the fitness space along the lines of everybody has the same 24 hours in the day. False, wrong, completely and entirely. But I also hate self-limiting beliefs along the lines of, you know, if you've always been this way, you're always gonna be this way. I think that really ties into a lot of the 
talk about body types in the fitness space. We can talk about what a lie body types are in a future video, but yes, it, they're an excuse for why fitness won't work for you or they're a way to sell you some scam product. I grew up chubby. I got teased for it. I was very self-conscious about it. Then in my teens, I got slim. I got very fit. I got into bodybuilding. Flash forward to a few years later, I gained a lot of weight and not a lot of time. And it sounds terrible, but honestly, I just thought it was that chubby kid catching up with me. I thought I had cheated my body. I thought this was just the way that I was meant to be. What I failed to realize at the time was that I was going through one of my darkest times mentally. My stress was off the rails. I was not eating well. I was not taking care of my body. I had become a lot more sedentary because I was no longer commuting to university. And when I was commuting, I was taking public transit. So I was like walking probably at least 10,000 steps most days before doing my workout. Everything around me had changed. And yet I blamed my body, which in hindsight is devastating because I was just feeling so terrible at the time. And you know, it's part of why I wanted to make this video in case you have struggled with something similar on your journey. If you've got caught up in this belief around set point or body type or looking at other people online and thinking, oh, you know, it's so easy for them because they just have a different body type than me, right? They've never struggled with the things that I am with my routine. And you know what? That might be true, but it is possible to make a change. And it starts with taking stock of your surroundings and creating a routine so that you can get to that new settling point and maintain it sustainably. So that is it from me. That is it for my little rant today. But I hope you enjoyed today's video. I always love hearing from you in the comments. I always love hearing about your experiences with things that we talk about. So if you maybe have struggled with some of these beliefs before, if you have really identified with a body type and kind of use that, I guess, as like an excuse to maybe not show up fully on your journey or I don't know. Let me know in the comment section down below. I love to hear from you. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next video.